Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Tom O'Brien. We get the Dow up 167. S&P is currently positive by 16. NASDAQ positive by 67. We got NASDAQ 100 at all-time highs. Amazon at all-time highs. Quite a market. And this segment, we're joined by Jack Gleason from Major League Trading. Jack, welcome back to TFNN. Morning, Jack. Hey, guys. How's it going? I wasn't sure if the mic test went okay, so can you hear me? You sound perfect. Okay, good. Good to know. Yeah, how was your guys' 4th of July? I know I missed you last week, and I was up in uh, Whitewater, Wisconsin, so I wasn't, uh, wasn't around. We but had a, was, we had a, we had a nice, time. we had a nice 4th. Yeah. We had some fireworks. We had some relaxation and some sunshine, so it was nice. How was Wisconsin, man? Got all your fingers and hands? We do. You guys That's got yeah. all, all of them, man. We came back with that seriously. And I had some great mortars, Jack. I still, <laughs> I have some, I still have some mortars left, left in my garage. Big, big fan of the mortars. The lack of the bank, more Oh, love them, man. Hey, were you selling oil all day yesterday, man? <laughs> oh, yeah, that was all me. I was pushing that market down, me and my trade room, right? Uh, wow. Yeah, we had a great breakdown off that oil inventory report in the prior day. I mean, I have no real support until 68.56, and uh, a couple of resistance levels I'm watching, 71.59 right now and 71.22. 71.22 has already had its first test. So I'd look okay. for a first test at 71.59, but man, that thing is, it's about time it pulls back. That was, we were talking about it, just an amazing move. And so we're looking at on the, that on the chart, Jack, and where's that 71.96 to 71.59? Where are those coming off? Is that off of uh, so, a retracement? Um, it, it, uh, it's not in the chart you sent, uh, I sent you to because it's just above and out of the frame, but okay. pretty much we had the high of Wednesday to the low traded the 50% retracement on one, on Wednesday going into that oil inventory report right at that $74 level. That's where the sellers stepped in. And then obviously we had that exaggerated move to the downside, uh, range expansion, volatility expansion. And when we get that, instead of taking the last high and drawing it to the low looking for a retracement, I'll begin drawing the low to the low, as I've explained before, or the sure. high to the high. And in this case, the 38% retracement is 71.22, and that okay. actually traded in the overnight session pretty much to the tick. You can see that reaction to the downside. Now, we could possibly not retest that 71.22 or even trade in that 71.59. That does give us targets down into 69.28. Now, that's just a short covering target, not necessarily support. I have zero support till we get to 68.56, which you can see on that chart I shared with you. You take, I always like to look left of the chart and look at the last time we traded that price zone. And that was a consolidation zone right before we had broken out. So I'm looking at that 68.56 on the top end of that support. And then the bottom end of that range before we broke out is that 67.72. But downside all day, not looking for any support trades uh, at, at this time in oil. But the good news is your friend Gold, which we talked about last two weeks <laughs> that I was on the 12.43. I didn't send you a chart there, but it was from two weeks ago. 12.43.4 was that level. We traded that in the overnight session, so I'm going to open it holds on because if it breaks that level, not going to look pretty, I think. So really, yeah. really hope that for Gold. Jack, let me ask you, the, you know, when you, when you go from the highs to the highs and the lows to the lows you, with the Fibonacci expansion contraction, where did you get that from? When did you start doing that coming off? Most of those highs to highs. <laughs> on the internet, you'll find it with. Uh, so, I mean, I, you know, when I first started trading, I had a heck of a lot of time on my hands because um, sure. I didn't have a job. I was in school. And so, I, you know, obviously, fibs, everybody knows knows about fibs. I mean, you know, they're every other technical analysis. And I just, what I would do is I just began, um, I would just draw them everywhere on the screen Which until cool. I figured yeah. out. Yeah, until I figured out, like, where would be their best reaction, because I would notice, like, after big moves outside of a range, like in the case where we had an oil, that, you know, we wouldn't get that high to low. So yes. I started looking at lows to lows, and then I just started seeing that there's there's got to be an algorithm here, because I'm not pausing yeah. the market as much as I'd love to. And I began to see the footprints of that algorithm, and I've been using it ever since, and that was probably in 2012. So awesome. I've been doing that yeah. for six years. Right. It's kind right. of a secret to my, my, my personal success. I, every, every time I show somebody that, they're just like, man, that's crazy. Well, but, no, yeah. screen time's screen time's important. I mean, what, what I love, when I, even when I'm doing my volumes, when you get big days, the highs and the lows are really important, you know, whether you're going up or you're going down, of those days. They just, they are, you know, because that's where the battles have taken place, right? That's what it seems like, you know? You know, so... 
pretty cool. Yeah, so you, we also we're going to look at the um, the Brussels, Brussels, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a that's a high to high sequence as well. Now, if you actually look at that, I call it my anchor where my draw begins. Every okay. time we pull back in from that high to the high, whether it was a high on that Tuesday or the following, we have actually held the 38 and 50 percent of trades. Now, this is I think it's this is the third time. Um, that this is trading. The Russell is the weakest market here today. We had a little bit of divergence. It was one of one of the the only one of the four indexes to get that new low, but we came right into that 50% retracement. Um, and you know now we're heading back down. So if we don't hold this, I would be very cautious below 1682. But as long as we continue to hold above 1682, maybe we'll check back to the lows of the 6th of June before heading higher. But this would give us you know, an upside target of 1730. However, we need to get through the 1709 to 1713 resistance level left drive just have marked. Anytime we top out like that, I always just mark the general consolidation area because that's what's hard to push through. But uh, first test of that 82s, we rallied seven points like that, but now we're coming into the second test trading 1683.2 on my end. So that's going to be cool, pretty cool watching because, you know, we have that the bank earnings are going to kick off tomorrow morning. It's like, you know, the banks took us higher two days ago in a big way. So I'm looking for anything to basically give us more information of where these banks are going to be tomorrow morning because they can move. They'll move the market. They will move the market. Just depends which way they're oh, going to move Oh, absolutely. What do we got? PNC, Wells Fargo, Citibank, and I think there's one more. JP, JP Morgan. Yeah. yeah. JP Morgan. Uh, yeah. So... Yeah. That'll all be uh, big news, and I'm I'm kind of glad we pulled back over the last few days because I knew if we, you know, the way we were trading on Monday, it was like this thing's going to the moon, and you know if we didn't really get that pullback that we've had, I think Friday would have been ugly because they would have rallied into, you know, they would have had to come out with something fantastic for us to continue to Friday. So actually, I do think this pullback that we had midweek is healthier for the long side because if we went straight up into the event. There'd probably be uh, just a reversal on Friday. But now that we've had the reversal prior to the event, I think the Bulls have a better chance of a continuation going into tomorrow morning. Yeah, no, I listen, that's a good point because last time Tommy and I were on the air, when all those uh, bank numbers come out last quarter, how could they make any more money? Record-breaking earnings are good. and the shares they, took a and, dive occasionally. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, you know, banks are good at one thing, and that is making money money oh you know they yeah turn. oh my god they just yeah. get better and better that's seriously <laughs> that's more financial yeah. products right guys just you know credit cards whatever short-term loans you name it they have all the product you want man uh well jack thanks so much for coming on of course jack everyone you can check out jack majorleaguetrading.com give them your name your email and receive some free videos over there jack man great education thank you for the great charts all those good fibonacci levels and uh we look forward to talking to you again next week have a great one, Stay Jack. Here, Thanks so there much, man. Bye bye. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow up for 153. Nasdaq is up 58. S&Ps are up 15. We'll come right back.